to God. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And again, you have rescued our lives. And God, we're not going back. <laughs> I have nowhere to go. <laughs> God, you are the one who holds my life in your hands. You're a faithful God. You rescued me from a life of sin, and darkness. You rescued all of us, and we are just so thankful. We're grateful, God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit who helps us, who lives in us, who causes us to triumph in every situation. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. God, we give you glory and honor this morning. We love you, God. We're excited about you. Hallelujah. You're the best thing that we have. You're the best thing that we have going for us. We just bless you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that we would all live a life pleasing, well-pleasing to you. And Father, that we would never disappoint you. But when we do, your grace is sufficient. And you'll pick us up and you'll dust us off and make us like new again. And that's one of the reasons why, just one, that we love you. Nobody else can do that for us. Nobody else can remove unrighteousness from us. No one else but you forgets our past and gives us hope for the future. We just thank you and we praise you. Father, I pray that you would bless this time and bless this service and bless this people. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, amen. Hallelujah, somebody say, I'm rescued. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. Praise God. I want to I wanna, uh, share uh, some word with you today. You can go back and read it yourself. Amen. Um, but we're talking about reigning. I want the video. I'm going to just start right away. I, wanna, I want the video to put up Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all blessed today? For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overwhelming grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them in two right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So we have been uh, talking about, we, we shared this, went over this verse last week as well, but that verse says that we are to reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Matthew, Matthew 16, Matthew 18 says that we are the called out ones and that we're the ones to bind and loose and we're the ones to cast out devils and we're the ones that are supposed to bring order and in fact bring heaven on earth wherever we go. And so that verse says that we are to reign in life by, it, it means by and through Jesus Christ. In other words, we're not going to reign anything without the help of Jesus Christ and without the anointing that's on him, the Messiah, the anointed one, and his anointing. But we have to understand that if we're going to rule and to reign in life, reign means to rule as well, 
and to have control, just like God told uh, uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But it, it makes sense that if we're called to reign, then nothing should be reigning over us. How can we reign when we're being reigned over? Okay, you understand that? I want to give you some scriptures to go home with and, and you go over them yourself and let it sink into your own spirit. So with that being said, I want us to go to Romans chapter 6. They're going to put it up there. and We're going to, um, I, we're going to read almost the whole chapter, but I just want you to be patient again. I want you to go home and read this chapter again yourself. And it says... It talks about since we're under grace and not under, under the law, should we just live like we want to live? Uh, and it says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? What does that say? We who died to sin. We died to sin. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in sin? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Somebody say, in newness of life. Jesus died we died with him, praise the Lord, by a supernatural action, a supernatural process by God that we died with him. Amen. Let's, let's keep reading. For if we had been united together in the likeness of his death, which we did, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6. Knowing this that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be what? Be slaves to sin. Let's keep reading. For he who has died has been freed from sin. I, I remember we used to say years ago, a dead man can't sin. A dead man can't sin. If you're dead in your sins, if we, if we die with Christ, a dead man cannot sin. And the scripture also says that we need to mortify the deeds of our body. Kill them deeds, right? Uh, let's keep reading. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also, what? Live with him, verse 9. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. The title of this message is Free to Reign. Sin no longer has, um, I always forget my titles. <laughs> Sin no longer has dominion, okay? So let's, let's go back and read that last one. The last verse. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Anybody agree with that? He was raised up. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, right? Our great high priest interceding for us. He did all that he was supposed to do to save us thoroughly. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Who believes that? Death no longer has dominion. If, if if death had dominion over Jesus Christ, we're messed up, right? Let's keep reading. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. How many of you believe Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, he lived to please God, and he still lives, ever lives to please the Father, but look at verse 11, it says, likewise, somebody say likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed. Somebody say for real, for real. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we need to consider ourselves dead to sin so that we could be alive unto God and to live for him and to please him. Tell somebody next to you, say, that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, Besides, uh, um, uh, after all, he sent us here. Why would he send us here? Why would he have us be born to live uh, unto ourselves? No. He sent us here because he sent us here to, to serve a purpose, to do what he, we were born to do. And so we have to consider him. We have to know what he wants. God, why am I here? So we know that we are to consider ourselves dead to sin and alive unto God. Let's read the next verse. Therefore, do not let sin reign. That word reign means what? It means to rule. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it. That you should what? That you should obey it. So we're supposed to uh, not let sin reign in our bodies. Okay, let's keep going. That you should obey it in the lust. Verse uh, 13. And do not present your members as instruments of righteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. See, we we have to realize that we are called to reign. And before we got born again, we knew how to, we knew how to lend our hands, lend our voice, lend our money, right? Lend our feet to sin. We, We took all of our instruments. And, and did it with all our hearts to live a life of sin. But now, how do we, how do we beat sin? By not lending our, our, our members to unrighteousness. Or lending our, our, uh, our instruments, our bodies, our hands, our mouths, our lips, our, our heart, all that stuff. Our hands, our feet. But we're, we're, we're supposed to be doing something else with it. Can we go back there? So I just want you to keep this in mind. If we are called to reign, then we can't allow sin, which Jesus took care of. He abolished it. We can't allow something that's been abolished and taken care of and removed of all power against us to allow that, something defeated and something that was stripped of its power against us to reign over us. Because we're supposed to be reigning and ruling. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin, let's read this together. For sin shall not have dominion. That means rule. Sin shall not have the rule over us. Because it's been taken care of. Sin's power over us has been removed. We have no excuse. And I'm not fussing. I just want us to see who we are and what's happening. If we're supposed to be ruling and reigning, why are we letting sin manipulate us and hold us back and keep us from doing what we're called to do? Right? Right? Tell the person next to you, say, you are little Jesus going somewhere to happen. Say, you're supposed to be making an impact. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. For sin shall no longer have dominion over you, because you have dominion. So let's get that straight. We have dominion. We have the rule. We're God's called out ones. We're his ecclesia. We're his his church. We're the ones that are supposed to be making things happen. Right? We have authority to rule and to reign. Let's keep reading. 
That's the main scripture I want to get to. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? Do you not? Let me read that again. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? We get that? We have to present ourselves to obey somebody that has the rule over us. You are that one's slaves whom you obey. See, that's why, they, why, that's why we don't want to obey sin, because now we're sin slave, ignorantly, because we have power over sin. You are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death. Look at that. So sin wants to rule over us, even though it no longer has power over us, but sin wants to rule us to lead us to death. That's where it's going to lead us. Or of obedience leading to righteousness. Obedience to who? Obedience to God, which will lead us to righteousness, works of righteousness, fruits of righteousness, acts of righteousness, right standing with God, in a good position with God. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Verse 18. And having been set free from sin, having been set free from sin, having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You know, in one of Paul's, um, I wrote it in... in, in, um, in my Bible, because sometimes I feel exactly like that. But he, he wrote that he was a love slave. And I wrote my name on there. Because sometimes I feel like a love slave. Because I'm not my own, you know. Sometimes I want to do something else. <laughs> but I'm a love slave. I can't do anything else. I'd be disobedient. I probably just want to break once in a while, that's all. But, um, <laughs> but that's it. Well, I said, that's exactly what I am as a love slave. But it's a love slave. It's not a sin slave. It's not a beat up slave. We're a lo- at least we're a love slave. Agape love. The God, God love. Let, let's uh, go back to that. Are y'all getting what I'm saying so far? That's why you need to go back and read this. And start taking control of your life. So we can change. So we can push back. So we don't put our hands out to do sin. I have to use my lips to lie. I have to submit my lips and my words to tell a lie. Isn't that right? But if we're a slave to righteousness, we won't yield our members to sin. If I steal, I've got to use my hands. I've got to yield my hands to steal. Right? So we don't we don't yield. All, all we have to do is just don't yield. Just don't give sin your cooperation. We tell sin, I ain't participating. I'm not participating. And, and you have no rule over me. I have rule in this life. Given to me by God. I have authority. You have authority. Let's, let's read. And having been set free from sin. Anybody knew that? <laughs> having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. We're, we're, we're you know, and Paul, he's using the, this terminology because people can relate to it. Now, we know that we're the sons of God and, the, and daughters of God. But Paul wanted them to understand that you should be a slave. You should be a worker of righteousness. You should be ruled by righteousness. Righteousness should be reigning over you, not sin, right? Again, I'm, I'm just 
trying to get us to realize who we are and just get mad enough to change and, and put on your boxing gloves and start resisting the devil and start making sure that you live out the full plan of God for your life. I speak in human terms. Oh, thank you. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, you now, somebody say now, present your members or my body. That's why Paul in Romans chapter 12, he said, I beseech you, brethren, get on the altar. <laughs> I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Get on God's altar, because we are not here for us. We were not our idea. We were God's idea. And the quicker we get in line with God's plan for us, we are going to be so blessed. We're going to be so strong, so powerful. Right? But we got to stop playing around and acting like we just have to settle for what's happening. We have to change everything. We got stuff going on in our bloodline, right? We got curses trying to dominate us, and it's up to us to break those curses. We don't just look at it and say, oh, yeah, that happened to my mother and my mother's mother. No. You, you look at that and you say, that's not a good thing. That's not a blessing. That's a curse, and I'm breaking that thing off of my life and, and off of everybody that comes after me. Right? So this is who we are. Let's, are we finished? No, we're not finished. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh, for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness. How many remember? We used to sin real good. We were all in. Didn't have no qualms. We woke up to sin. We went to bed sinning. Right? And we, we, we were all in. Party! You know. <laughs> Come on, let's go get in trouble. What can we drink? What can we smoke? What can we do? Right? We were all in. We were slaves to sin. Members are slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Verse 20, let me go faster. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness or, or free from righteousness. You had no obligation. We had no obligation. When we were, weren't saved, before we got saved, we had no obligation to righteousness. Didn't even think about righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? That's what it got us living a life of sin. We, st we got stuck with stuff that we're ashamed of. Thank God for forgiveness and God removing all of our sins. For the end of those things is what? Death. What, but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Verse 23 and most of us are familiar with this. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we've been called to righteousness now. God took care of sin. Sin can't rule over us anymore. We're slaves to God. What we do, we yield ourselves to God now. When we have opportunity, now, and that's why in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God says, uh, there's no temptation, but, but ha has taken, that no temptation that has taken you, but what such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow us to be tempted above what we are able. But God will with the temptation, make, of a way, make a way for us to get out of it. So we don't have to just yield to sin. We don't have to just go rob a bank. 
We don't have to just lie. We don't have to steal uh, from people. We don't have to uh, um, uh, manipulate people. We don't have to do those things. Right? The only way we do it, the only way sin can reign over us, even though it's really a moot point, it can't reign over us. But we participate in the works of sin. We have to willingly participate. But really, it can't make us. Sin can't make us do sin. You understand? Are you hearing me? So there's power in that. Sin, the devil, I remember I was thinking of an old show, Flip Wilson. And he would say, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. The devil suggested you do it, but he didn't make you do it, right? So we're cool. We'll make it out of every temptation, test, and trial if we just don't yield to the sin that's trying to pull us in. And that's in our control. You know, I guess sin can be like a snake. You know, and then you say, oh, I'm hypnotized. I just, uh, you know, no. <laughs> you better change your gaze. Take your eyes off of that snake of sin, right? Don't, don't look him in the eyes. And so I just want us to know if we're going to reign in life, which we are, if we're going to experience divine restoration, which we are, then we're going to have to start reigning in life. And we're going to have to start taking control of our lives with God's help. We reign in life through one Christ Jesus. We can't do it without him. But it's already his plan, so he's going to help us. So when we're t tempted to sin... We have to believe that like uh, God t told Jesus, um, told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. You're going through something difficult, I tell you right now, my grace is sufficient. And you're going to get through this too, Paul. And that's the same thing God tells us. So when we're faced with temptation, we don't have to give in. We can just call on the grace of God, which is his favor. It means his favor. It means earthly blessings. Uh, it means benefit. And then uh, Dr. Lamont, I still don't know where he got it from, but it's the best definition that I know that makes grace clear. God's empowering presence, enabling us to be, to do, and to have. What call, God has called us to be, to do, what God's called us to do, and what God has called us to have. And so the grace of God is sufficient for us because he is, uh, his power, his grace his empowering presence is always available to us that we can say no to sin. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not lying. I'm not cheating. I'm not fornicating. And anything else you can think of. With that being said, let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, and I'll end there, okay? Okay. I think this will be enough um, for you all to go back and read. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not, are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, somebody say, thank you, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit is here to lead us. And I believe that word led means like when you put a harness on a horse and you, and you pull him in your direction. So the Holy Spirit is always there to lead us. Go this way, baby. Go this way, darling. Go this way, son. No, don't go over there. No, this is, this is the way to go. And so, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. 
sexual immorality, impurity, and de uh, debauchery. What is that? Debauchery. I think I wrote it in my other Bible. It's bad. All this stuff is bad. <laughs> you know, I might not have the definitions right here, but they're all bad. They're, they're not good because they're works of the flesh. They're manifestations of the flesh. So when we get tempted to do any of these things, idolatry, idolatry, we can make our job our idol. We can make stuff our idol, right? We can um, uh, make movie stars our, our idol, right? When we were uh, idols, anything you worship besides God, who's the only one that's alive, by the way. Well, when you talk about idol statues and witchcraft. So you, you don't be, you don't go yield your hand to the tarot card reader. And those people in those offices, you're going to have some demonic stuff happening in your house. And you wonder what happened. Y'all hear me. I know it's in some of y'all's bloodlines. You better pull your hand back. You better stay out of that place. Because now you're messing around with the devil. And he sees you coming and he's wringing his hands. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to set her up. I'm going to set him up real good. She knows better than that. She knows God's not here. <laughs> right? So then we, we write ourselves our own ticket. Let's, let's keep reading. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred. Everybody knows hatred's wrong. Discord, don't be starting trouble between people. Jealousy, what you got to be jealous of? You are who you are. God's got plans for you. He's got your stuff. He's got your provision. He's got your anointing. Fits of rage. So, you know, I was thinking, you know, like, what is sin? Well, if Jesus opened the door and walked in your house, Whatever you're doing that you'd be embarrassed, that's sin. Because we've all fallen short. We're supposed to glorify God. So we got to watch how we live behind closed doors. Because he sees anyway. I'm not at your house, but the Holy Ghost is at our house. So anything that would, would grieve the Holy Spirit, we shouldn't be doing. Discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, uh-oh, orgies, and anything like it. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we're the called out ones. We're supposed to be operating in the kingdom of God. We shouldn't be risking the kingdom of God, which is the rule of God, the reign of God, the, the, um, the principles of God, the way God does stuff in his kingdom. We don't, we're not reigning and ruling in a physical kingdom, but we still have kingdom authority in an invisible kingdom. It's invisible right now. Amen? And so we... We cannot reign if sin is reigning over us. We read these scriptures. Sin has no more dominion over us. So we should all just cut it off. Just cut it off. Unless there's an addiction, a physical addiction, you're addicted to drugs, you're an alcoholic, it's not that easy just to say, I'm not drinking today. But there's help for that, too. But anything else, you just don't do it. You don't go. You don't reach. You don't uh, add your money to it. You don't put your hands to it. You don't put your eyes to it. You don't put your ears to it. Right? So it's just a matter of us saying, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing it. Because it's messing up my blessings. It's messing up my dominion. I, it's messing, it's, it's, it's voiding out my power. I can't reign because I'm being reigned over by sin. You understand what I'm saying? So we don't have to do anything. All we have to do is change what we're doing with our bodies and saying no to stuff. 
Amen? So we have the authority. We are called to reign. We have the power. Amen? Praise the Lord. I think, uh, well, I've run out of time anyway. So, But um, we've been called to rule and reign. So just get ready. Read these, these uh, chapters over again. Read the scriptures over again. And get into your heart. You know, and, and, and get with God. Talk to him about it. And I'm not saying everybody's sinning. I'm just saying if, if there is anything that you're dealing with, you got to, you have to trust God that he can help you. Amen? So that we can be free to reign. Free to reign. Amen? Glory to God. Well, let's give the Lord a hand. Father, we thank you and we praise you that sin has no more dominion over us. Glory to God. And that we are called to reign in this life. Not when we go to heaven, but to reign in this life with the help of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Anointed One. And we just thank you and we praise you for all of your help. We thank you for all of your grace. We thank you for your willingness to use your power on our, on our behalf. And so we just bless you. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. Praise the Lord. So somebody get excited. See, better days are coming. Better days are coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to... Um, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you know, we've been talking about how um, God, uh, John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wishes that no man perish. And so if you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed, and you say, Pastor Connie, I want to be free of sin. And I want to reign in life for change. But I need to turn from my sins. I need to do what the Bible says. It says to believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth unto righteousness. And believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. If that's you today, I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and that you're my Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You served my sentence in hell. God the Father raised you from the dead to live forever so that I could live forever with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, and be my Master. Now say, devil, you no longer can lord over me or fool me or trick me because today I have a new Lord. I'm a love slave. I'm a slave to righteousness now. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming into my heart and coming into my life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Just in case if there's if anybody here, did anybody here pray that prayer for the very first time? Maybe you prayed that prayer. Uh, those of you watching online, anybody? Did you pray that prayer for the very first time? Is that anybody? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, everybody, it's time for tithes and offerings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody get excited. We're getting ready to mingle with God. We're going to mingle our finances with God and his plan. Amen. I'm going to read a very familiar scripture to you. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I want to focus on... Um, one verse in particular, but I'm read starting verse six. Six. Uh, uh, before I, I do that, uh, the video department is going to show us 
uh, the, diff the three ways to give. Also, Here the at Living Faith, so we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our new LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also get online at lfccnj.com slash giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We also have, still have pink envelopes, of course. We have two uh, tithes and offering uh, uh, boxes in the back of uh, both sides of the sanctuary. If you're still writing a check or uh, giving in another form on, on your pink envelope. I'm going to read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 9, as I said, starting in verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And we're talking about a harvest on your giving. When you give, uh, the Bible says, uh, I think it's Genesis 11, uh, 8, 11, um, and it says, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Seed is always smaller than your harvest, but you, you, you sow it anyway. Amen? That's what farmers do. And they sow by faith, knowing that they're going to get a harvest. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency. I like, I like for the, the fact that it says always and all. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. I want to read verse 8 to you in the Amplified uh, Version. And it says, that God is able to make all grace Every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. And God is able. God is able. We sow by faith. We tithe by faith that God is going to do what he, what he says in his word. And here he says that when we sow, that, uh, so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. We don't have to ask anybody for anything. In fact, we're in a position to help somebody else. Amen? And, and, and not to say that some of us don't have to go through that period where we don't have things sufficient and we do need things from, uh, from others, other sources. But God wants to get us all to a place that we are self-sufficient and we have extra. And it says, uh, and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support. Somebody say, amen. Say, I'm for that. It require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so if um, we're going to, uh, with the new, uh, you know, the ways that we can give, it still seems weird. Nobody's moving and there's no action. But um, so I, I um, by faith, I believe you have sown in the different ways that you are that you can sow into the ministry. So we're going to uh, go over our tithes and offering confession. Amen. Remember, this is fresh every time. This is we, we don't we don't just go, uh, uh, you know, dear Heavenly Father, and be to your word. No, you 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 reign and rule. And make your words mean something today. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Don't be weary and well-doing. If you've been sowing and tithing and it doesn't look like anything's happening, don't get weary. Don't change your words. Don't pull up your seed by bad words saying this tithing doesn't work. This giving doesn't work. Don't pull up your seed out of the ground. So as you put your seed in the ground today, 
Don't pull it up with your words. You keep watering it with praise. You water it with faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. You keep believing God because what he promised, he will also perform. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, in obedience to your word in Malachi chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 7, and Matthew 23, 23, we come before you and before Jesus, our great high priest, to worship you as we bring the tithe and an offering. LFCC is our storehouse chosen by you for us where you've placed your name and where your spirit leads. Heavenly Father, we remember that we were in darkness and slaves to sin, but we called on the name of the Lord Jesus and you delivered us and brought us into the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that you are our provider and our source, not our jobs, nor our bank accounts, nor the government, but you, Father, through Christ Jesus. Therefore, we are no longer limited, no longer limited. We're no longer limited by the world's economic system, inflation, economic depression, poverty, lack, debt, nor any other part of the curse has power over us anymore. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us because we are tithers and givers. Therefore, you've rebuked the devourer for our sakes, and we believe we receive our blessing from heaven now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So be it. So, so let it be written, so let it be done. Sounds like a movie. Amen. Well, let's, if you sowed seed today, some tithe, some tithe and sowed seed, but let's, let's, uh, speak to our seed say seed I've sown you into good ground my church the gospel the kingdom of God is good ground so seed you go in this good ground and you die and you sprout and you grow to a huge harvest that is more than enough and we thank you for it in Jesus name amen somebody shout somebody shout over your harvest shout over your good seed and good ground glory to God hallelujah 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 somebody say I'm called to prosper thank you Lord thank you Jesus amen video thank you thank you Thank you for tuning in to Living Faith Online with Pastor Connie McLean. Please join us again next time. God bless you.